I need you to listen to me. Something really bad happened. You remember Louis Fergoli? From high school? I went to his apartment. But when I showed up... Louis? He was smiling at me. How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel and time for another episode of Luke's Reviews. On today's video, get those cheesy grins ready because the happiest horror film has spawned a sequel with Smile 2. Sky Riley is the biggest pop star on the planet and after a year of struggles is ready to embark upon a world tour. But just before that all kicks off, she witnesses a horrific death in front of her, and for fans of the first film, we know exactly what that means. For the days that follow, Skye becomes haunted and tormented by this spirit, feeding off past trauma and causing her to lose touch with reality. And before you know it, you're greeted with that creepy ass smile. Parker Finn came screeching into the horror movie scene a couple of years ago with his feature film debut, Smile. A deeply unsettling examination of generational trauma and mental health struggles packaged into a curse horror movie. It was well directed, suitably unnerving, and especially gross, with a jaw-dropping climax. And so I was very eager to see what Finn had up his sleeve next, and as it turns out, he's back to the well for a sequel to Smile, this time turning its attention to fame and addiction. Naomi Scott plays Skye, our lead of the film, who has battled her own demons well before we meet her. She's amid prepping her global tour, so that means rehearsals, fashion shoots, press interviews. Before we even get to any of the nastiness, Finn flings us into a world that we are somewhat unfamiliar with. Now, this did give me some cause for concern, because on one hand, you've actually got a unique opportunity to provide some never-before-seen scares. I don't think I've seen a horror movie in this sort of setting before. On the other hand, you also run the risk of isolating your audience. The reason why Smile and so many other films of this nature tend to work is because you're focusing on typical run-of-the-mill people, people that could be you or I. Now, that results in a term called relatable fear because it involves the audience putting themselves in the shoes of that character, and it's not too much of a stretch. It is a bit of a stretch for me to imagine that I am a multi-million dollar selling recording artist. But aside from a couple of instances where the scares didn't land as well as they could, Smile 2 is undeniably creepy, I would say creepier than the first film. Each scare is well earned, and Finn fills the atmosphere with suspense and dread. Even when you know that a scare is impending, you just find yourself automatically wound up because it is so unbearably tense. There is a brilliant back and forth that takes place within a car, and you know that the end result is a devastating car crash. I was wincing, even though I knew the outcome. Thankfully as well, Finn still relies on practical gore, and my word, uh, does this get gory? You'll be shocked, appalled, and left speechless as to the nightmarish images that Finn conjures up in this film. Naomi Scott gives possibly one of my favourite performances of the entire year in Smile 2. Because of Scott's presence, Skye becomes a deeply layered character. We're aware of her past faults, but that's not because we get a sit-down exposition scene. It's because Scott fills this character with so much pain from her past, which in turn is allowing the demon to feed on her. Finn's screenplay strays away from the mental health angle and focuses on addiction and the cost of fame, and he utilises those themes to influence the scares and twists that play out in the film. Scott is dialed up to 11 at all times. She is rocking the stage, and she is also nailing Sky's complete and utter mental breakdown as this demon is tearing her life apart entirely. Not to mention that she can down a bottle of Voss water like a freaking champ. My only issue when it comes to Skye's character is that she is not as resourceful 
as Sosie Bacon's character was in the first film, because Rose was an intelligent character. She was going out of her way to investigate these goings on, to prove to herself that this wasn't all in her head. Whereas in the case of Skye, she's not really going out of her way to find out what is going on. She does learn some information, but it is through a bit of a, an expository sit-down scene where someone just spoon-feeds her all of this information. Now, I know that is because we can't have that discussion of, is it all in our head or is this real? Because we know that it's the demon who is in control. But most of what we see Sky go through is dedicated to just watching her suffer. It's incredibly mean-spirited because there's not really any attempt for her to try and save herself. Another issue that I had with Smile 2 is the way in which that Parker Finn chooses to structure his film. It is almost identical to the first Smile, which I was very disappointed to see. There were so many opportunities that could have embarked down original paths. And yet, it in turn plays out a bit like a checklist playing off of things that we know are going to happen in a Smile movie. We know that the main character is going to watch some horrific death in front of them and therefore be cursed. Check. We know that the hallucinations are going to kick in and they're going to start struggling to decipher what's real and what's not. Check. And of course there is going to be a final act where the main character completely loses and spirals out of control. Check. There's a particular scene that I actually felt was slightly mishandled in that it presents itself as you trying to figure out is this real is this uh, what the demon is conjuring up to mess with sky i actually feel like they made the wrong decision they went for the supernatural approach when something such as that could have been even more terrifying had it been real and could have messed with sky even more if you've seen the film you might know what i'm referencing it happens in the first act I'll give you a clue, a yellow t-shirt is all I'm going to say, but I, I thought that making that a supernatural scare was actually the wrong decision. All in all, Smile 2 doesn't quite reinvent itself, but it does succeed in giving audiences a great horror for Halloween. In some moments, you'll be hiding through your fingers, and in the next, struggling to keep your lunch down. Naomi Scott is definitely a star in the making here, and I'm still incredibly eager to see what Parker Finn does next. But if we're to get a Smile 3, I'd like to see the formula switched up a little more. I'm going to give Smile 2 a 7.5 out of 10. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on Smile 2. Let me know, have you had a chance to watch the film yet? What did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And my question to you, I would like to know, it's a bit of a disgusting question, but what do you think is the goriest horror movie? But that's all the time we have for today, so thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Hello, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to click that like button, and if you aren't already, click that subscribe button too.